race? <laughs> Can't miss? Oh, thanks, baby. Take two carrots out of petty cash. I'll check with Come you. Come on, kid, let's go. Why? What am I doing? Touting again. Touting? Him? Now, listen, kid, we've seen you use some pretty wild schemes. Why, is it a crime this horse happens to have a sweet tooth for lemon drops? Yeah, but you're using it so these crazy horse players will think the horse is giving you a tip. Oh, you know it, and I know it, and the horse knows it, but it'll sound very peculiar in court. Just step out of line once, kid. The handcuffs are ready. Lay off me, will you? And if I get lucky, I'll buy you some art supporters. I think just last Thursday, I went for one of his tips. You too? I tell you, George, I've got a hunch on mince pie. Remember that time you ate that whole mince pie and you couldn't go to work the next day because you were sick and the office was struck by lightning? Ellen, that horse isn't going to run any faster just because its name is mince pie. Mince pie is a pretty good three-year-old. Going to win a lot of races, that is, if his leg gets well. Y you think there's something wrong with his leg? Think? <laughs> I'm the track vet. It's a precationary infection of the pedestorial area, which... Oh, inflamed ligaments. Uh, imagine allowing a horse to race with a bad leg. Half of these horses should be in wheelchairs. It's the only reason they fight for the rail. It gives them something to lean on. Would you believe it? There's only one sound horse in the race. Doctor. Doctor. Hmm? You said there was only one horse that wasn't sick. Please, Doc, which one? All that information is confidential, you know, sort of between doctor and patient. Well, we wouldn't tell anybody. You could share your secret with us. And we'd share our winnings with you. Oh, no, please, please. That would be unethical. However, if after the race you'd like to donate something to the clinic, we're so overcrowded, we have two horses in every bed. Oh, certainly we will. Uh, which horse feels well? Well, if I were a betting man, I'd consider S-I-X a very lucky number. S-I... S-I-X. That's the number dancer. Come on, now. Thank you, Doctor. You're a credit to your profession. Oh, it's nothing. Oh, excuse me. Pardon me for crowding in, but I flew all the way from Chicago to see my brother ride this race. First time I get to see him ride a winner. His brother's a jockey. Funny thing, Mom always thought he was going to be the tall one. How do you know your brother's going to win? Well, that's the way it's fixed, unless they try to pull something crooked. Sometimes the horses make their own deals, too, you know. <gasps> well, uh, what's your brother's name? We'd like to cheer for him, too. <laughs> if you knew that, you'd know which horse. And... Oh, you won't be sorry. I'll take care of you after the race. A big chunk. Oh, well, I don't care about the money so much. After all, you do look like decent people. The number is... S-E-V-E-M. S-E-V-E-M. That's Iron Bar. Oh, we're so glad we happened to meet you. Would you believe it? This is the first race we've won today. Well, uh, there, there's your brother now. Hmm? Well, hi, Jerry. Mom and Dad send their love. Lots of luck, kid. See how he pretends not to know me? Smartest little operator around. I tell you, sir, I know we race Christmas Day. Look, Sonny, I gotta be sure. Now go ask Judge Wilkinson for me. Hmm, mm, they're still pretty nose, huh? Mm. Oh, I beg your pardon, ma'am. You all dressing me. Well, howdy, child. Did you all just drop this $5 bill? Oh, I, I couldn't have. Mine all hundred. Yeah, mine, too. Must belong to some Yankee. Well, you all must be as lucky as you are beautiful. My gentleman friend betting all this on Iron Bar. Iron Bar? Well, corn my pone and shit my chitlins. I was going to drop a handsome figure on that animal myself until my uncle told me the race was fixed. Yo, uncle? Yeah, well, that Judge Wilkinson. He's the president of the turf club and also the head judge at the finish line. I'm just waiting now for him to give me the nod. He's investigating, of course. My head judge? That's him, the one with the pretty girl. He gives me a dollar to ask you if we race on Christmas Day. You wouldn't take my word for it. Must be a tourist. Well, if the race is fixed for Iron Bar to lose, 
You must know who's going to win. Yeah, but I couldn't divulge information like that. I've been sworn to secrecy. I gave my word as a true gentleman of the South. I swore on a stack of black-eyed peas and candied yams. It's messy, but bind it. There's 2,000 cash money here. My gentleman friend would take good care of you after the race. Well, bless your heart, honey child. Uh, the number is uh, E-I-G-H-U-R-T. You mean Lightning Street? None other. Thank you, sir. Uh, after the race, I'll meet you at the lettuce counter. We'll settle up. You all understand. Lightning Street. Hey, kid. You're getting in at a big time. I'm expanding my business. I'm brassing into the $100 window. Did you get a load of that loot? There's a tomato with her own cabbage patch. Two G's. <laughs> <laughs> what do you expect? Moose Moran always bets heavy. Moose Moran? You mean that doll belongs to Moose Moran? You didn't know it? Hey, you better be sure you gave him a winner. A winner? I don't know one horse from another. I better grab her and tell her the fixes. I'll have her change her number. Say... There they go. It's iron bar. Lightning streak. Where are you? You want my blood on your hands? Lightning. Lightning streak is left set to pull. Daddy, I'm at the masked man. I gave you two grand to bet on iron bar. I know, but iron bar. The nice man told me who all's gonna win the race. In the back stretch, iron bar is lengthening out. Was this nice man eating lemon drops? You all know the nice man? Mm-hmm. I told the nice man you all give him something after the race. Yes, we'll give the nice man something after the race.
Now that you're feeling better, let's talk about the ten grand you owe me. Oh, but you said... No, it's not the money. I just don't like to have all the smart guys get the laugh on me. Here's a diamond, Moose. Now, kid, I'd like you to know Sam the surgeon. Sam, this is the lemon drop kid. Pardon the glove. Are you a genuine doctor? Practically. Would have graduated if I didn't drop a forward pass my senior year. First doctor I ever met keeps what he takes out, then throws the patient away. <laughs> well, I'll be going. Whoops. Oh, look, Moose, all I got is 15 cents and a box of lemon drops. You have one? Moose, I haven't got 10 grand. I haven't got it on me. Or in me. Trying to make me a sucker can be very painful. So we no. prepare him for surgery? Oh, now wait, Moose. Look, I'll get the 10 grand. I'll... Hey. Only 23 shopping days till Christmas. If I only had till Christmas. Where would you get 10 grand? Well, I'd have more of a chance if I could get to New York. I got a lot of friends on Broadway. Name one. Well, there's, uh... uh and then there's, uh, uh... He's not out yet. And, uh... The, uh Okay, so they're not friends. I tell you, I can still raise the money. By touting $2 horse players? No, I'll find a way. It's all the same to you whether Sam kills me now or doesn't open me till Christmas. And if I get the money, you're 10 grand ahead. You see, Moose? Picking up 10 grand will be fun for you, and killing me this way, it'd be so sloppy. <laughs> sure, I've always wanted to be a man about town, but not in little chunks, you see. It's a... Dead, I write 10,000 off the books. Alive. Possible asset. Okay. I'll be in New York for Christmas. I want to spend it with my wife and kids. They're in boarding school. What if he runs away? We'll find him. Yeah, I hear you find people so good that after you find them, nobody else can find them. <laughs> Kid, I got some property in Long Island. A casino. Oh, I know the place. They close it down for repairs. The roulette wheel started paying off. I'm coming north to peddle it. You have the money for me Christmas Eve or... Christmas morning, you'll find your head in your stocking. My head in my stocking? Well, that's not... Oh? Oh, thanks for a nice evening. Merry Christmas.
kid, you know you haven't got any friends at the Ritz. Nellie, how can you say that? You know I have. Why, there's, uh, wrong hand. Well, there's, uh, uh, don't worry, I'll give you the money back. Get it by six o'clock. That'll give you time to dispossess an orphanage. You know, Nellie, I'd give you the shirt off my back if I had any underwear on. Sure, kid, I know that. It's not just for me, it's for my husband. Well, you remember my husband, Henry. Well, who doesn't? Sing Sing, class of 31. Greatest little safe cracker in the business. Henry's getting paroled after 20 years. He gets out Christmas Eve. Gets out Christmas Eve? Christmas Eve. I may not be around to see him. But I will, so I can tell him how we got no place to stay. Yeah, well, what happened to that old folks home that you and Henry were moving in? Yeah, Sunshine Home. <laughs> well, they turned down my application, all on account of Henry. They won't take an ex-convict. Come next visiting day, I'm gonna tell Henry to stay right where he is. At least it's warm up there. Hey, birds, late file. Stay with him, Nellie. Keep your chins up. Something will work out. Well, maybe so. I've been in worse jams than this. At least you're not alone anymore, anyway. I'll see you. Tuchor, Pelletary, Pecora, Pancho Dwyer, Grover Whalen, Goldberg, Johnny Burr, Rainy Baxter. Uh, she still lives here. You're on your own, fellas. Hitchhiker. <laughs> <laughs> Never saw it blue before. Ah, still works.
Well, I figured you won't need a fur coat in Florida. You went to Florida. I stayed here. Oh, Franny, squaring the money I owe in the coat is a cinch. I just struck it rich in Miami. Mm, you look it. Well, you don't understand. I'm out at the racetrack with some wealthy friends, and I get to thinking about the woman I love, meaning you, Franny Baxter. Naturally, I don't wait to change. I grabbed the first plane home. My luggage is on the way. If Miami is fast, how come you left in such a hurry? Oh, uh, there's a horse named Wedding Ceremony wins the second race. Wedding Ceremony, that's a hunch. Could mean nobody but you and I. Now look, kid, I remember how you operate. No holds barred. Well, let's not talk about a wedding ceremony unless you're on the level. Oh, I don't blame you for not trusting me, Brainy. Sometimes I have days when I don't trust me. But I'll do anything to be worthy of you. I'd even get a job. A wedding ceremony and a job? That's the greatest long shot parlay of the year. Yeah, I just wish I hadn't left my wallet in my new cashmere slacks. As soon as my clothes arrive, I'll take ten bucks and go right down to get a license. That'll show you. I've got ten bucks. Yeah? I'm calling your bluff, kid. We can get the license right now. Oh, no. I'll go right down to the license bureau. Oh, wait, I'll slip into something. Oh, no, 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 no. No need of you going along. You stay here and fix up this place. Remember, this is our honeymoon cottage. Get a lot of champagne and confetti, huh? And just stand there, just like that. Beautiful. All the way downtown, I want to remember you smiling. But we both have to appear for a license. Hey, kids, wait! <laughs> My ten bucks. Did it again. Reunion, fellas. Hush, 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 hush. Charlie, according to our figures, you owe the government $31,400. You mean to say all that dough I pay for protection ain't deductible? Why, that money is just... What do you want? Well, I was just passing by. Thought I'd drop in and see my old pal, Oxford Charlie. How are you? How's your feet? They're killing me. What are you here for, giving or getting? Oh, Charlie, I'm cutting you in on a solid gold deal. You'd be able to wear Herman Oxfords with your share of the profits. All you have to put up is ten grand in cash. That's enough. Throw the crumb out. But all you have to do is plant a measly ten grand and you harvest a fortune. Throw them out. Ain't I got enough trouble with income tax? Oh, but Charlie! Listen, Oxford. I owe Moose Moran ten grand. Either he gets it Christmas Eve or I get it Christmas morning. Lend me the dough, will you? You know what Moose will do. I'll wind up in the river with a cement bathing suit. I'll supply the cement. Out! Oh, but Charlie, I... Char <laughs> I'll leave my phone number in case you change your mind, huh? I'm sorry. Oh. Communist. Help the needy. Help the needy. Help the needy. Help the needy. Put something in the pot? Oh. Huh. At least you got one. Help. Help the needy. Thank you, lady. Help the needy. Help. Help the needy. Thank you. Help the needy. Thank you, lady. Help the needy. Merry Christmas. 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 Merry Christmas.
I'm just a small businessman. I'm in the Santa Claus business. Come along, Santa. I'll phone for the reindeer. So I'll take a cab and meet you at the station. Sydney Milburn. Sydney Milburn. Your Honor, that's the lemon drop kid. <laughs> the lemon drop kid was collecting money for charity without a license. What charity? His own, Your Honor. How do you plead? Well, Your Honor, I'd like to ask for a postponement of this case until January the 1st when my attorney returns from Washington. Washington? Yeah, he's down there trying to fix a parking ticket for President Truman. Milburn, how do you plead to this charge of panhandling? Panhandling? I was standing in the corner with my bell and kettle like hundreds of other everyday average American Santa Clauses. You were collecting this money for your own personal gain. Those other men are working for charity. It's an organized charity and has a city license. Uh. Oh, a city license. Mr. Milburn? I'm going to turn this money over to a worthwhile charity. Ten days or fifty dollars. Oh, but I haven't got fifty dollars and I can't spare ten days. We'll arrange your schedule to spare it for you. Next case. Oh, but Judge, please, Your Honor, uh, could I make one phone call? Yes. It's long distance, I... <laughs> Come on. Come on. That judge didn't look honest to me. For 18 years, he's been a member of the bar. That's what I mean, drinking on duty. Hello, kid. Nellie, what are you doing here? Ask him. He had me arrested for trying to get my personal belongings out of my apartment. But he didn't even want me to take Henry's picture. That's the only picture he ever had taken. Gee, hasn't changed a bit. Mm. Let's go. You woman beater. Come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, oh. Hold it. Hold it. Hold what? Hold these. Yeah. Judge told me I could call my lawyer. You said your lawyer was in Washington. Yeah, it's a firm of Duncan, Munkin, Schmunkin, and Brainy. Boy, when my lawyer gets through with you, you'll be wearing your brass buttons at half mast. Hello? I. Oh. Hello, is Brainy there? Yeah? Well, hello, Brainy. Hiya, honey. It's Lady Lawyer. Brainy, baby, where do you think I am? Don't tell me. Let me guess. At the License Bureau, of course. You married yourself. How cozy. Now, look, I started for the License Bureau, baby, but on the way down, I stopped off at my old rooming house to get your photograph. I like to look at it when I'm not with you. Well, the landlord wouldn't let me in to get it, so... One thing led to another. He poked me, I poked him, and where do you think I am? <laughs> In the pokey. The pokey. Stay there, just the way you are. Beautiful. I want to remember you, smiling. Smiling? Look, who's smiling? I... <laughs> Look, would you leave town for a couple of hours, please? Look, Brainy Baby, you gotta listen to me. Listen to you? My fur coat listened to you. My ten bucks listened to you. I listened to you, and we're all fed up listening to you. Hey, Brainy, we're on. So long, kid. Merry Christmas. And remember, if I don't get in touch with you, by all means, don't get in touch with me. No, oh, Brainy. Brainy. Brainy, baby. Brainy, don't you... Brainy. Here, hold her. She can't do this to me. Come back here, Santa. You... At least I broke even. Then you hear such a roar and you think they want more. So you start in singing like mad. You can see the queer shaped well. You see the queer draped well. But we can tell why the fellas have gates. Well, they like to hear a thing in the pink. Oh, Mr. Dunkel, what a beautiful mink. Your mom can pleasure from every measure when you hear me sing. Ah, oh, I think, I think. Your reaction is surprising when we're doing our vocalizing. Yes, you obviously came just to see us sing. Okay, girls, back at six o'clock. Hi. Hi. Some breakfast? No.
No, thank you. Charlie, I don't know how... Yeah, to... yeah, I know. I heard about the lemon drop kid going to the jug. How much? Fifty. Out of my salary. Mm. You know, why is it every time I go for a dame, she winds up marrying the drummer? But two blondes ago, I shell out a fortune in orchids and pearls. She hooks up with a waiter. <laughs> yeah, little fat guy. Oh, I'm not getting hooked up with any waiter. The kid pulled a couple of fast ones on me, and I'm not letting him get away with it. He thinks he's safe in jail. Mm. Thanks, Charlie. I'll pay you back. In money. Yeah. What's the matter, Santa Claus? Your reindeer go through a red light? Santa Claus hasn't been a good boy this year. What's you find in your bag, Santa? Boy glad tools? Riff raff. You've got a visitor, kid. Your family doctor. Well, Sam the surgeon. You come to do your Christmas chopping early? No, Santa. I came to remind you what Moose Moran wants for Christmas. I remember. I remember. You know, kid, jail's a silly place to try to hide. Moose has more friends in than out. Sam, you can put your knife in mothballs. I got an idea that can't miss. I know I can come up with a ten grand. That's fine, because some of the smart boys are starting to give Moose the laugh, and Moose don't like it. All we have to do is borrow Moose's casino from now till Christmas. <laughs> Moose can't open it for high-class gambling. You can't even open it for a bingo parlor. Wait, you're talking to a genius. You know Nellie Thursday? She's in here. She's got no place to live. She tried to get into an old folks' home, but they wouldn't take her on account of her husband's an ex-con. Now, here's the idea. I borrow Moose's casino. I pretend it's an old folks' home. I stick Nellie in there with a bunch of old dolls. With them in it... Now, this part is kind of tough, but I figure if I can work it, I can talk the city into giving me a license to collect for charity. I further figure I can get every mug on Broadway to help me do the collecting. They all love Nellie. She's such a grand old doll. You trying to unload a mob of old dolls on Moose's casino? It's only until Christmas Eve. By then, I'll have collected enough to pay off Moose. This is the most legal double cross I've ever heard. But what happens to the old dolls after Christmas Eve? Well, can I help it if suddenly the collection money just happens to get lost and the old dolls can't afford to stay in the casino? Moose will have his dough, and I'll be in the clear, see? You're going to dump all those nice old ladies out on the street at Christmas time? I wouldn't do that to my own mother. Any bookmaker in town would give you three to one. Is it a deal or not? Sounds crazy, but that ain't my department. I only start operating if you don't pay off. Where'd you intern at? The finance company? And hey, Sam, there's a little matter of the $50 fine. You advance it, and I owe Moose a round figure, 10050 No thanks, kid. I like having you in the deep freeze. We can thaw you out in time for the holiday season. Merry Christmas in just 15 days. Merry Christmas. 15 days. I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. Please let me out of here. Hey! I should have said please a long time ago. There's a lady waiting for you in the office. She paid you fine. Goodbye, Santa! Delinquents? Here's your receipt. Thank you. Brainy. I knew you'd come. Couldn't fight it, eh? I don't know what I'd do to him. Well, I guess you're wondering about the outfit. Oh, no, sport. You always were a flashy dresser. You don't know how it feels to be free again. Well, you're going to be free about five minutes. We're heading downtown for a marriage license. Together. Brainy, you're making me the happiest man in the world. And there'll be no more dancing for a few measly dollars a week anymore. Not when you're my wife. We'll make Oxford Charlie give you a raise. Well, I don't want Just to think, in a few short weeks, we'll be Mr. and Mrs. Lemon Drop Kid. A few short weeks? What's the stall this time? Well, uh, Come on, you'll be proud of me. Whoops. Hello, kid. Been watching television again, huh? What's the charge, officer? Will you stop rehearsing when I'm trying to talk to you? Remember the time you win when it was your turn to lose? Who hides you out for three weeks? Nellie did. But, kid, what's your personal angle? Button your lips, sweet. Nellie's like a mother to you. Lemon drop, kid. I just don't believe you're not looking out for the lemon drop kid. But you gotta believe it. 
There must be hundreds of old ladies like Nellie Thursday all around Broadway. Old dolls who can't get into homes because maybe they rolled a lusher, held a little homemade beer in the old days. Maybe even your own mother. They never hung no rap on Mom. Straight flush Tony, when you were down and out last year, who staked you to a new deck of marked cards? Well, Nelly. Okay. So everybody go home and get a good night's sleep. We're all getting up at noon tomorrow. There she is. Remember, not a word. This is a surprise party. Hello, Nellie. Kids! Oh, gloomy and out of terror. How does it feel to be out? Cold. <laughs> oh, fine. We got a hot car waiting for you. Since when have you boys gone in for swiping these? Oh, we thought you'd enjoy a little ride. Thanks, but I'm walking. There's a two-bit boarding house just around the corner. Good, we'll drive you there. Oh, you're crazy, kid. Why, who pulls up to a cheap boarding house in a limousine? Only old dolls with friends. Get in. <laughs> Why, kid, isn't this Moose Moran's old gambling casino? Moose Moran's old what? Nellie Thursday home for old dolls. Well, what does this mean, kid? It's just a two-bit boarding house in Long Island, Nellie. Polo field for a backyard, hot and cold running petunias, southern exposure on all sides, stucco bathtubs. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. There's a room for Henry with a nice big safe for him to practice on. Hey, kid. Me and Goomba found this in the park. Unlocked. We thought it'd be nice for Nellie. All good work, Sally. Put it out on the lawn. She's look good by the statue. Statue? But we don't have... The general has been sitting in Central Park long enough. We figure he needs a change of scenery. You take that general and put him back on his horse. Anything you say, kid. We too figured the general is lonesome without his horse. They probably brought the pigeons, too. Hey, Straight Flush, help him, huh? You still think we cottage out here to get free newspapers? Kid, it, it is an old folks' home, isn't it? Sure it is, the best. We'll make that sunshine home rat trap be satisfied with our overflow. And you did all this for me? Turns out you're the most popular doll on Broadway. Every chiseler on the street is knocking himself out for you. Kid, I hear about this place when it was wide open, but I'm never inside. It's strictly for swells. Not anymore. Any broken down old doll on Broadway is welcome. Gin rummy, or maybe a game of softball. We loaded up on old dolls. Welcome home, Nellie. Bring me. You remember Mrs. Baumgarten? Singing Sally's mother in law. Singing Sally donated her. Yeah, she'd be much happier over here. It's always a strain, the married couple with the mother living in their house. But it was my house. Hey, kid. Come out here a minute. All right away, Gloomy. See that Nellie meets the rest of the sorority, will you? Kid. Oh, it's all so wonderful. There's nothing I can say. I just haven't got the words. Good, let's keep it that way. Say no yak yak. Pickle Nose found this nice little old lady living in a shack under the bridge. Well, hello, nice little old lady. Welcome to the Nellie Thursday home. Thank you. What's this? My canary. I've had her nine years. Well, if that's old for a bird, she can stay too. Oh, you're sweet. You're sweet too, Pickle Nose. Bring the chair. Hurry up. Hurry up. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. What do you got there, Hogan? We got cream for the coffee. <laughs> Think you are? Hop along, Cassidy. Put two of those mats in the crap tables. We'll have to double up these dolls. 
Chuck a luck and roulette a smog, we'd have to squeeze two on. Snap it up, Slim. You look like a chambermaid. Did the Admiral Hotel donate this linen? Yeah, but we haven't told him yet. Okay, men. Those aren't mattresses. Of course not. They're from Stillman's gym. They're wrestling mats. You don't expect these old gals to sleep on bare crap tables. Kid, you're not very bright, but your heart's in the right place. Cut out the chatter and make the beds. These old gals will be busting out of the powder room any minute. I'll be glad to go to bed. <laughs> I can stand for a little sleep, too. Well, I'm sleepy, too. I can sleep no longer than my arms. It's nice to be in Oh, here. you look wonderful. Maxie Rosenblum didn't look that good when he was champ. Such lovely beds, so modernistic. Yeah, we're just using the craft tables for a few days until we get ahead in the collections, then we're putting in beds. Beds? Well, who cares? Henry can come here Christmas Eve and we'll have friends. Sure, now hit the sack, everybody. Betty buys. Who's playing the field? Jump in, tap the mat. Upsy dupsy. You're sweet. You roll off the table, it's no dice. Yeah, now go to sleep and don't worry about Henry. When he gets here, we'll make him house detective. Kid. Yeah? But something bothering me. Yeah? What? Well, everything's been moving so fast, I just started thinking. Kid, are you sure that Moose Moran turned this place over to us? Oh, sure he did. Now you let me do all the worrying, will you? Well, it's just that Moose never struck me as being generous. You can't tell about people, Nellie. Some of the bad ones are good inside, and some of the good ones are bad inside. Okay, it's getting late. It's lullaby time. Now, let's everybody snore it up real big, huh? Yeah. Yeah? Will you tuck me in, too? Yeah. Put the shade over the birdcage. Will you, kid? Okay. It's like running a stale nursery. Everybody go to sleep. Any dollar who isn't asleep in one minute, don't get any slugs tomorrow to play the slot machines. Kid, could you leave the lights on maybe a little longer? Oh, sure. Relax. Make like Moose Moran's casino is wide open. You're throwing 11 sevens in a row. The chips are building up in stacks. Me and Brady are here to deal you out a whole deck of dreams. We'll show you how to own the moon. And how to bounce the world just like a toy balloon. We'll show you how to have your way. And help yourself to wishes on a silver tray. You want to fly to Bally High or pick another island you would like to buy. How about Manhattan? You can travel cheap when you're fast asleep cause it doesn't cost a dime to dream. We'll line our walls with dollar bills. And use the wrinkled ones to wipe our windowsill. Pour our old champagne down the kitchen drain. No, it doesn't cost a dime to dream. We will call up the president. Ta -da -da. Family resident. Pay off the national debt. Are you a dreamer? And if we find the president slightly hesitant, we'll say we have a lot left, gents. A fancy home, why, that's a snap. To get from room to room, we'll have to have a map. Just to see this prize, only close your eyes. It doesn't cost a dime to dream. We play roulette. We place our bets. Boing. We lose a million bucks and cut out great Suzettes. Call the U.S. Mint. What we need, they'll print. It doesn't cost a dime to dream. We'll have a maid. Who has a maid? Who has a maid to serve the two maids lemonade. We will spend our dough just like H2O. Red a town in Spain just to entertain. Give the dice a spin, watch the chips roll in. If, if you, you pay, pay attention, attention to our scheme. So won't you go to sleep, count some pedigree sheep. Cause it doesn't cost a dime. To dream. Lights out. Whoops. Must have pressed the start.
say the one in the fireplace. Where'd they go? Hey, we'll have to change Moose's wiring. We don't expect any raids. Sure, sure, little Billy. Sandy will be there at Christmas Eve. Are 
chunk it in, or Sandy will give you a Mickey. Silver bells, silver bells. Oh, hi, kid. Hello, Brandy. Hello, Gloomy. Work. Wait a minute. You don't have to frisk me. I ain't holding out on you. Them shoppers just ain't breaking loose with the Gitas, that's all. Well, no wonder they ain't chunking it in the way you're growling at them. Well, what's the matter? You told us to sing, didn't you? Sing, yeah, but to mention money at Christmas time is vulgar. You gotta work on their sentiments. Be subtle, delicate. <laughs> Silver bells, silver bells, it's Christmas time in the city. Ring a ling, hear them ring, soon it will be Christmas day. City sidewalks, busy Sidewalks dressed in holiday style. In the air, there's a feeling of Christmas. Children laughing, people passing, meeting smile after smile. And on every street corner, you Maybe wacky, but not Penny Annie. 
This is big business. Whoa. Why do you know that in four days we've raised almost $2,000? All right, so you collect it. Those baggy pants Santa's raised two grand? Mm -hmm. You see, the kids got it here. Here. Let me. Thank you. Well, Brainy, your job will be waiting for you when you come back, which proves that I haven't got it here. I'm afraid I haven't any change. 
Oh, that's all right. I'll handle that. Wouldn't think of taking it off. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hello, Willie. How do you know me? Santa Claus knows everything. Santa knows who knocked off that box factory in St. Joe. Santa even knows about Willie going into case the bank set up. Better put something in the kettle. Why, you... Uh... If Willie doesn't put something in the kettle, Santa will stop ringing the bell and start blowing the whistle for Dancer, Prancer, and Flatfoot. Merry Christmas! <laughs> and a Happy New Year! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Ho, 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 ho! Ho, ho, ho! Ho, ho, ho! Kid, I 
think that you're the now, most... Now, Brainy, don't jump to conclusions. I can explain everything. You've been explaining dirty tricks since the first time I met you. Well, I have to raise ten grand. Did you want me to get killed? That's the best idea you ever had. How can you be so low, Stuart? I didn't realize the old dolls would take it so big. At least they're going to be around for the payoff. On Christmas Eve, Moose Moran is going to mark me paid in full. That's eight days off. What do you expect me to do? Steal the money back from a hoodlum like Oxford Charlie? Why not? Then at least somebody around Broadway might shed a tear for you. That's more than I'll ever do again.
Oh, yes. <laughs> Not if I was Sit down for yourself. Oh, no, Mother, you don't have to tip me. Really? Well, here. Have a cigar. It doesn't cost a dime to be the line of ones we got to Yeah? I'm a poor old lady who hasn't got to eat kind, sir. And I heard this was an old lady's home. Sure it is, but we're up to our ears and old dolls now. Oh! But I have no place to go. All my life I've had to scrimp and save to support my children. I've sewed till my eyes burn. Cooked over a hot stove day after day. I even had to take in floors to wash. Sorry, old doll. No dice. Oh, please, sir. If you turn me away, I'll have no place to go. Except to the authorities. Uh, uh, hold it, ma'am. Uh, come right in. I'll talk to the boss. Seeing as you're a poor old lady who hasn't got to eat, uh, maybe he'll change my mind. And wait here while I put in a kind word for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's an old lady. Boss, she was trying to get out the window again. Nellie's disappeared and somebody's got to find her. Brainy, I want you to stay in line or I'm going to have the boys... I'll get out of here any way I can. All right, then. Take her back to her room. And stick with her until it's time to move them all out. So what about the new old doll outside? Well, one more for a couple hours won't hurt anything. Besides, we can't have her going to the police. Watch your end. This is her, boss. Mrs. Beasley. This is Herbert Beasley. Well, welcome to our home, Mrs. Beasley. You know, you're just in time to move to our new location. See, the other girls are just going to stay in this house until Christmas time. Then they move to a real mansion, big as a casino. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Does it mean that you accept me as a guest? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so happy I could cry. <laughs> all right, all right. That's... My medicine. My medicine. Oh. Hey, Maxie, take her in with the other nice old ladies, will you? Oh, I'll never forget you for this. You're a good man. You're a very good man. Ah, forget it. Thank you. Hey, nice old lady, you got the wrong peg. Oh, my goodness, I did make a mistake. Clumsy me. <laughs> Heavy, isn't it? What are you knitting with, steel wool? <laughs> I can only afford some new glasses. I... <laughs> It doesn't cost a dime to dream. Ladies, meet a new member of the club, Mrs. Beasley. How do you do, Mrs. Beasley? I know I'm going to be happy with all you nice people. So nice to have you. Mm. You poor dear. Sit here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Isn't this a lovely home, ladies? We hate to disillusion you, Mrs. Weasley. It's a great big horrid old jail. Jail? Dear me. But the warden, uh, the superintendent, seemed like such a nice one. That's not the superintendent. He's Oxford Charlie, the racketeer. Horrors. He's as big a hoodlum as the lemon drop kid. <sighs> what are you working on, dear? Oh, <laughs> uh, after General Custer was massacred, Mr. Beasley insisted I carry his pistol at all times. Indians, you know. <laughs> Pesky redskins. What in the world are you knitting? Uh, a mop. <laughs> it's hard to get them anywhere, and it goes so well with my Argyle scrub bucket. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hot, isn't it? Uh, don't you think a larger size girdle would uh, be much more sensible at our age? I take a small. Always have. <laughs> Dear Mr. Beasley, he was so proud of my hourglass figure. You still have your hourglass figure, dear. Thank you. But most of the sand has gone to the bottom. Yes. There we go, old girls. Everybody get ready. We're moving out. The old flower shoppy is going to make another delivery. Come on. This is outrageous. Oh, that was a short visit, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Come along, dear. Coming. Coming. My coat. My coat. They're out in the truck. You dog. Come on, old doll. Coming. Coming. you nice old dolls had left. I'm not a nice old doll and I'm not leaving. <laughs> and I haven't got a gun. The lemon drop oh, kid, what? Oh, 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 no! Thank <laughs> you. 
Did you see what I saw? Yeah, I saw her. Did you see an old lady? Yeah, she's in there, officer. Yeah? Not for long, she ain't. Did you see an old lady in there? An old lady? <laughs> Very funny, I heard it. Who was that old lady I saw you? <laughs> Very good. I'm with the towel company. What's this I hear in Florida about an old doll's home? It was the kid's idea. I told him he was crazy, but that's how he figured to raise the money. I don't want old dolls or anybody else fooling around here. The New York cops would love to hang one on me for opening this place again. We collect from the kid and then lock it up tight. Hi, kid. Sam tells me you raised the ten grand. That's good. Yeah, I got it all counted out for you. Here you are, ten thousand even. Say, it's almost Christmas, just fifteen minutes more. Wouldn't you like to settle for five thousand just to show your Christmas spirit? Huh? Would you... Seventy-five hundred? No spirit, huh? You can forget my presence. You don't have to... Okay, ten thousand even. Paid in full. Well, Moose, hello. When did you hit town? Just arrived, Charlie. Had some collecting to do. Oh, you rat. That's my money back. Where's my sixteen grand? Oh, well, here it is. I just borrowed it. <laughs> there you are. Now, you're paid off, and you're paid off, and everybody's happy. Let's shake hands and wish each other a Merry Christmas, huh? Just a minute. You owe me ten grand. Oh, yeah, you're the one. There you are. You'll have to work it out. I've done my share. Boy, you chiseling... Sam! Sort of a guest shot. 
I just did 20 years for safe cracking. That's all. We can't serve the ice cream without the silverware, and the whole thing is in your honor. Besides, you can't stop all of a sudden. You have to taper off. Well, I, I'll have to take my keepsakes with me. Oh, the stuff is here. Oh, wonderful, Henry. Good luck. Excuse me a minute, Nellie. What are you up to now? Oh, I'm up to here, you're up to there. What a parlay, huh? Hold the phone. You've got that fixed race look in your eye. Don't you see? That's love light. No, I, I'm free to get married. Oh, you poor little doll. You've been waiting so long. But it was worth it to you. Now you got me. But we can't afford it. I haven't been working lately. Relax. I have everything planned. This is the 
responsible for all this. Thanks, kid. Oh, it's deductible. Come on in, Hank. <laughs> Guests of honor, Mr. and Mrs. Henry Regan. It's almost 12 o'clock. Time to serve the ice cream. I'll get the napkins and the dishes. Goody for you. It's your party, Nellie. Come and cut the cake. Where's the silverware? Sam the Sturgis said it was in the safe. How do we get it out? Out of the safe? Yeah, how do we get it out of the safe? The safe. Oh, no. Not me. But it's an inside job, Henry. Nothing illegal. Sort of a guest job. I just did 20 years for safe cracking. That's all. We can't serve the ice cream without the silverware, and the whole thing is in your honor. Besides, you can't stop all of a sudden. You have to taper off. Well, I'll have to take my keepsakes with me. Oh, the stuff is here. Oh, wonderful, Henry. Good luck. Excuse me a minute, Nellie. What are you up to now? Oh, I'm up to here, you're up to there. What a parlay, huh? Hold the phone. You've got that fixed race look in your eye. Don't you see? That's love light. No, I, I'm free to get married. Oh, you poor little doll. You've been waiting so long. But it was worth it to you. Now you got me. But we can't afford it. I haven't been working lately. Relax. I have everything planned. for money. Don't worry, honey. I'll hock the silverware. 